I've got a $10,000 account and I'm short $5,000 of this stock. What's that mean to me that's now halted? That so. means you can't use that money and uh, you're going to be paying borrow fees indefinitely. We, we talk about GTZ or going to zero a lot. So what, uh, you know, what, what's like best case scenario when, when you're short a stock and, and you, have you ever taken a stock all the way to zero? So uh, I hate people that say GTZ, good to zero, because Sorry. you do not want a stock to go to zero sure. because things get really ugly and I'll, well, I'll right. get into that. Okay. <laughs> uh, actually, my one uh, stock I mentioned earlier, CHC Helicopter, Heli Q, H E L I Q is the ticker. I'm still short that. Okay. Because years later. Years later. Yep, yep. Because it never got deleted. What sure. happens is even if the stock gets wiped out in bankruptcy, somebody has to tell, the company has to tell the Depository Trust Clearing Corporation, which is the huge faceless institution which does all the clearing of stocks behind the scenes between all the brokerages, they have to tell DTC. Uh, okay, delete this stock. Right. If they don't, that stock can sit there costing you borrow fees and uh, using up your margin indefinitely. Right. And uh, that is a horrible, horrible outcome that you want to avoid. Uh, there are some ways around it. It gets really technical, but the short answer is you do not want to hold a stock until it gets you want uh, it to after like it gets ten uh, thousandth of a penny. Yeah, yeah you want to, <laughs> if you're shorting like a bankrupt company, uh, most of the time it'll be a few cents a share by the time it uh, it is about to be deleted, yep. and then you cover because you want to be able to use your money. You're not going to uh, sit around and hope that the stock uh, actually gets quickly deleted. Uh, what I have found is that the stocks or the companies that become a public public company again after wiping out shareholders, uh, they delete the stock quickly. Okay. So Peabody Energy, BTUUQ, that was gone in a week or two. Uh, and uh, a number of other stocks uh, were gone relatively quickly. Sometimes it can take a couple months. Um, but yeah, I do not recommend that at all uh, because you don't want to end up in a situation where you're holding a stock short and there's no market for it. Right. And you don't know if you're ever going to be able to get out. Which is the same with, with halts. You know, yeah. want you, uh, you know, the, yeah, everybody, you know, talks about wanting to short frauds. One of the biggest issues is if you short a real fraud that gets halted in investigating, you know, kind of, kind of elaborate on that and the bad parts about that. So, so uh, this is a reason. We're really putting on a great sales pitch on, yeah. on short selling here, aren't we? Every, everybody wants to just, I, I can't wait to short my first stock. Yeah. <laughs> well, I look, we, you're certainly going to be uh, knowledgeable about the downsides yes. <laughs> and the risks, uh, which you need to be because- That's uh, it. That's it. I, I think that's the biggest thing with newbies is they don't, they don't know these things and that's why so many people run into problems. Yeah. But, right. but anyway, and explain halts. So. Halts are fun. Uh, so, okay, for OTC stocks, they can be suspended by the SEC. That is always two weeks. Then they'll resume trading. Uh, on the gray market, which means market makers can't trade them for their own account. And you won't see any bids, you won't see any asks, uh, you just have to look at the most recent sales and try to guess a, p guess a price based on that, <laughs> uh, which is fine. Usually they drop uh, when they resume trading in two weeks. But listed stocks, stocks trading on the NASDAQ or the New York Stock Exchange, they can be halted uh, indefinitely, yeah. really. and. NASDAQ. We had we had one there three four years ago. That, oddly enough, that that Michigan based shell. What was it? Oh. Uh, anyway, yeah. that was halted for like three years, wasn't it, or something? I, I, or, I mean, a really long time, whatever yeah. it was. So. Uh, but uh, the worst place for halts is Hong Kong. Okay. Now I'm sure most of you are saying, why am I going to trade stocks in Hong Kong? Well, it's a great place to go if you want to short frauds because there's a lot of frauds <laughs> there, and uh, the problem is. Uh, the Hong Kong Stock Exchange will literally halt stocks for years and then you can't trade it. Yep. So this one company, I shorted it based on a good short report. Uh, so some activist short seller put out a nice report saying this is a complete fraud. The stock was halted the next day or, or two days later and it didn't trade and it didn't trade. And the company was uh, legally based in the Cayman Islands and they started doing a liquidation of the company in the Cayman Islands and still not trading. <laughs> and the company was completely dissolved. There was nothing left, legally speaking, of the company. And still, it wasn't trading. So there's was no way for me to cover my position. 
and uh, I was paying borrow fees the entire time. So, so explain, okay, so let's lay out a scenario. Say I'm some small trader and I've got a $10,000 account and I'm short $5,000 of this stock. What's that mean to me that's now halted? That so. means you can't use that money and uh, you're gonna be paying borrow fees indefinitely and that is really bad. Now, and I can't, you know, I can't yell at my broker. I no. can't yell at a regulator. I can't call my congressman. I cannot trade that $5,000 and every, well, every day, you pay them monthly, but every day there's fees piling up on that as well. Yes. So it's like a double whammy. I, I, my buying power is gone and I'm paying fees on top of that as well. Exactly. So. Now, sometimes... You can, there, there are ways to get around it. It's hard, it depends on the broker. But if you can find somebody who's long the stock and uh, they want to get out uh, because uh, they want to be able to realize a loss for tax purposes, sure. uh, then uh, you can have them transfer the shares into your account and, okay. send them, and, and send them money via PayPal. I have done this. <laughs> I said, hey, I'm willing to pay three cents a share for this worthless stock. Uh, just give me your pay, give me your PayPal information. You give me the shares. I'll send you half the money now, half when when we're done. And I was able to get out of a trade that way. Nice, nice. And, <laughs> and he was probably happy too. Yeah, he was yeah. happy too because yeah. he got money for a worthless stock. Exactly. Yep, yep. <laughs> so, uh, yeah, you want to be very careful about that. But uh, that's a reason not to short frauds on the Hong Kong Stock Exchange. <laughs> it's very rare for a stock uh, in the U.S. to be halted that long. Right. Uh, but that, that one, I think I had that position three years. Oh, wow. It was a $5,000 or so position. I, w I, I, I ended up essentially making 100%, except for the $3,500 of <laughs> borrow fees I had paid uh, and, and not being able to use that. And money. not being able to use the buying power. That, that's, yeah. that's one of the biggest things that, that, again, just kind of throwing things out there to be cautious about. You got a small account, if half or two thirds of your account is stuck in this hall, I mean, you're just, you're doing nothing. You, 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 know, you don't have any buying power to trade. You're frustrated. You're annoyed, and, and you're just sitting there waiting, basically hoping. You know. So. Yeah. There was, uh, and, and another thing to consider is when you're shorting these stocks, usually they're lower priced stocks. You need to have two dollars and fifty cents yep. per share in cash to short a stock that's under that price. So let's say I short a stock that's thirty cents or twenty cents. Let's say twenty cents a share. I short uh, forty thousand dollars. Uh, wait, hold on. Let me do the math. I short 40,000 shares of a 20 cent stock. I always go with a dollar. It's easier. To yeah, remember. it is. <laughs> <laughs> 40,000 shares of a 20, uh, of a 20 cent stock. So you multiply that uh, 40,000 shares times 250. And that means that I can't do math. That's a $10,000 uh, position uh, for Oh my gosh, my math is so bad. <laughs> That's why you should always go with a dollar. Yeah, I really should. <laughs> anyway, the point <laughs> is, the point is, you're trying even if you're a in a forty money. cent stock, you have to have two dollars and fifty cents worth of buying power that is now locked. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So, thanks for watching our video. Be sure to comment below with any trading related question. We love answering your questions. Also, like and share with your friends and be sure to subscribe to be notified as soon as our next video hits. And if you're looking to expand your trading knowledge, don't forget to check out all of our other videos and be sure to click the trial below. Check out Stocks Trade. I think it is one of the best, most rapidly advancing softwares out there. Be sure to check out our trial.